let's say we put in 100 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Find the pH. I'm sorry, let's say we had 100 milliliters from zero. So we're not adding 100 mm -hmm. plus 30. 100 milliliters from zero. So let's say we're starting over again. So it's 100 milliliters total, not 130 total. So let's try working this out in our systematic approach. That's true. So if they're equal, that means that you have to zero on both. That's true. All right. Actually, so let's change this into moles. How many moles now of sodium hydroxide do we have? Uh, you don't actually don't even have to calculate it because you can see we started with 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl, and now we have 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So there must be the same amount of both of those. So we know that this must also be 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide, 0.01 moles of both. So then the concentration would be 0.01 divided by 200 milliliters. Or 0 0.05, 0 0.05 molar. Does this reaction go to completion? Yes, because we've got strong acids and strong bases. So now what? So what's the answer to the question? Undefined. So the answer would be undefined? Because if you get 0, 0, then you after that you, in the second equation, you do HCl plus H2O is equal to HCO plus, plus right. okay. HCl minus. Do you have any thoughts on that? Right. No, I'm still getting them away. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's make sure that we can do that. So, um, so that's good. You got the 0 0.05 molarity. Good.
No, this should be 0.01 divided by 0.2, right? 200 milliliters is 0.2 no. liters. I think you got that right in the first case. Or did you? No. So that gave us the 0.05 concentrations for both of those. Is that clear how to get that? That's a very important step. OK. So that would mean that uh, we'd end up with zero concentration of both of these. But now what? Now remember that we're going to have to do now one of the cases above the thick line. Which of the cases above the thick line are we now in at this point? HCL. This we don't have any HCL. So, so which of the cases above the thick line in the handout are we in now? No acid or base. That's right. That's right. Then it's th there's so what's the pH of pure water? Seven. Not undefined. Yeah, seven. Okay, okay. Yeah, I did the law, negative log ah, of zero, so right. undefined. Okay. Now, we're not actually processing these zeros anymore because we're not dealing with a strong acid anymore. We're not in the strong acid case anymore because we used up the strong acid. So it would not make sense now to write the reaction hydrochloric plus water because there is no more hydrochloric acid to react anymore. Instead, the reaction that you should be writing down, if you were going to write down anything, is water plus water forms hydronium plus hydroxide. Well, we already worked out earlier that if you work through that equilibrium reaction, you'll get that the hydronium concentration will be 10 to the negative 7, and the pH will be 7. So what's the answer to the question? Seven. Seven. Yeah. So the pH is always defined um, because there's always a hydronium concentration and you can always take the negative log of that. Um, now, I think you were thinking of the correct thing, though. The graph now is going to look like this. What's, what's the name for this point on the graph? Yeah, so you're remembering that the equivalence point is the steepest point on the graph. So here we are on the steepest point on the graph. So at 100 milliliters, we'd be at this point. Okay, so when we were going through the handout before, it might have seemed a little bit weird that the first case we did was no acid or base. But the reason we covered that is that that can come up in more complicated problems. If you have the same amount of acid and base, then after they react, you have no acid or base left. Uh, and then you just have pure water, which has a pH of 7. Remember that all this time we've been ignoring the hydronium from the water because we said that was going to be swamped by the hydroniums from the acid. Well, this is the one case where it's not going to be swamped anymore because we've used up all the acid. So now we have to go back to counting the hydroniums from the water. Okay, so this would give us this 7. Um, by the way, we didn't have to do all these calculations. We could have just said, if you have 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric, and you have the same concentration of the same volume of sodium hydroxide, clearly they're going to have the same amounts. So clearly they're going to completely neutralize each other, and we're going to get pure water. And it's not technically necessary to go through all these calculations. Or putting another way, once you see we're at the equivalence point, you know that the equivalence point for a strong acid and a strong base is a pH of 7. So you could have stopped right there. Uh, without doing uh, all of these calculations. So what's the equivalence point? Well, the equivalence point is when the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base, so that they could theoretically react completely with each other. So at 100 milliliter? Well, in this particular example, the equivalence point was at 100 milliliters. The only reason why this volume is the same as this volume is because the concentrations of these two things are the same as well. Um, so what's always going to be true is that at the equivalence point, um, you're going to have exactly as many moles of acid as, ba as for base, uh, at least for monoprotic acids. Okay. All right, so that gave us our pH of 7. Good. 